Okay, so now after having had Prof Tunku Sarah, we are now going to have with us Prof Razi, who is our former academic lecturer and the previous head of the unit of arthroscopy, who will be giving us his feature talk on not being discouraged. All right then, Prof Razi, I'm going to move the time over to you. Okay, here it goes. Okay, hello. Hello, everybody. Now, don't be discouraged. Now, this is mainly for those who are fighting for recognition, the youngsters and those who are rising in their careers. We are all faced with numerous and non-stop obstacles, or you can call them challenges. But as fate would have it, some face more difficulty, so, sorry, more difficulties than others. The main cause that you all have to pay are that these obstacles actually give you great emotional stress and tiresome efforts. Don't be discouraged. Now, in encapsulation, these are the key elements in your fight. I have to compliment Prof. Sarah, she has gone through insurmountable obstacles, wonderful tap dancing, wonderful hobbies. I also have to compliment our, uh, our specialist, fully qualified, who sang wonderful song, as China sings. Thank you, China. Okay, these three elements in your fight. Number one, self-dignity. Number two, your family and friends. And number three, you read. Now, I won't talk about the addendum until the end, who are Yasmin Mokahe and Leo Tolstoy. I'll start with the first, uh, the self-dignity. Self-dignity here, okay. Now, I congratulate any of you and all of you who have achieved this far. Where you are now, you can actually be proud of yourself and that self-dignity. You have already done righteous things with good morals and ethics. You all have noble ambitions and intentions. This is what I call your self-dignity. Now, there are many people, especially superiors, bosses, associates, and even financial problems, who and which bring you down. Your self, so, sorry, your self dignity is one of your mighty bastions to help you through. Next, family and friends. Now, I'm surprised to hear about this issue, this thing about mental issues during the COVID pandemic, such as loneliness, the sense of insecurity of a job, worries about how do you get the money, and so on. Yes, indeed, we are all vulnerable. Now, your family and friends, you must, must include them in your everyday life. It is not so much that you can cry on um, your shoulder, on their shoulders, or even cry on their necks. The big part is that your family and friends, they do care for you. You care for them. You will support, sorry, they will support you emotionally, financially, spiritually, and they can even cook for you or buy a beer for you short of getting drunk. Now, the big part is that your family and friends, they do care for you. Um, you yourself must come in some way to talk it out. You must tell them get it off your chest that you're doing this, a series of tasks or duties, some of which you need to accomplish so that you can pass a certain exam. They will understand. Next, last and not least in this encapsulation, you read, read. This is not just reading books. Go and see as what Prof. Sarah has done. And as you can see, our specialists are qualified. Go and see some beauty of nature. Watch some nice TV, movie, YouTube shows, happy ones or even sad ones to bring out the pent-up emotions. 
read yourself. I mean your body, your mind capacities. If you are tired, take a nap or relax. Get an experience to refresh and see what other people do to fight. Now, some of you may go for tranquility in religion. You can refer to the addendum now. Yasmin Mogahed <clears throat> and Leo Tolstoy. Let's start with Yasmin Mogahed. Now, Yasmin is one of those really nice motivational speakers. Um, she's Yasmin Mogahed. Now, this lady for, is really for those who are, well, into religion, seeking tranquility in religion. Yasmin Mogahed. She is an Egyptian-American Muslim who herself went through a very difficult period. You can sense, you can notice in her many Google photos, there is no photo of her husband. There is no photo of her children. Never mind about that. <clears throat> she came out of depression using religion. And she's quite a pretty woman as well. Wonderful speaker. Those interested, you can Google her name listen to her, and you really get some motivation. That's to say if you're into religion. Now, on the far side, in the opposite sense, extreme sense, okay, I put another name. Leo Tolstoy, he lived during the 19th century. Actually, Prof. Sarah is more familiar with this character. He is a writer of this very big, big um, epic book, okay, which is called um, War and Peace. He also wrote something called Anna Karenina, but we won't go into Anna Karenina. We'll go into War and Peace. It is a semi-fictional account, this book, about how Russian heroes fought against poverty and Napoleon's invading Grand Army against Russia in 1812. Leo Tolstoy was actually over-religious towards the end of his life. And he really, really frustrated his wife and eight children. He's got eight children, you know. Ten days before he died, he did a silly thing. He walked off as an 80 years old man and sat at the railway station to find his God. He neglected his family. Now, his wife was a really good woman. His wife took the trouble to edit his big, big book, War and Peace, seven times. Can you imagine that? Seven times before publication. He should be grateful to his wife. He wasn't even poor. So this is my point. Don't be over-religious. Now let's go to the next thing about perseverance. You've seen the kind of thing that Prasara has gone. You can see what you all have gone. A lot of obstacles. I make a special mention of Abraham Lincoln. He was president of the United States from 1861 to 1865 during the American Civil War. 700,000 Americans died in that civil war out of a small population of 35 million. Okay, that's just about slightly bigger than the whole of Malaysia right now. Compared to this, in World War II, only 400,000 American soldiers, soldiers, you know, died out of a population of 130 million. Now look at that list, as you can see here, okay? He has a long list of failures. You all know, you have all read about him. He was a self-educated lawyer who qualified by 1833. He didn't even go to university or the West Point like the Civil War generals later. Some people think with that kind of list of failures, you actually go to a lunatic asylum, see? Look at all his failures you can see there. He even lost, you can see here, his sweetheart in 1835, he lost his true love girlfriend. Yeah, he went into a deep depression, but he didn't go to a mental hospital. He did have long periods of depression. He reads the Bible, but he's not a religious fanatic. <clears throat> but because of his backwoods or rural humor, his faithful friends and family, and that's important, he became the president and achieved the unity of USA. He even had, when he was president, he had a bunch of politicians 
in his cabinet, half of whom did not like him. There, there was even one uh, member of the cabinet who says that Abraham, he actually told the newspaper in public to say that Abraham Lincoln is the link between the apes and the human beings in the course of evolution, because he read about Charles Darwin. Of course, actually, Abraham Lincoln was quite ugly looking. Um, many people, uh, they, he, he actually chose the uh, members of the cabinet for their merits of integrity and efficiency in their task. And he was really a great man. So that's the source whom I got, which I got about him. Um, it's from the book called Team of Rivals. And this is the lady who wrote the book. Her name is Doris Kearns, Kurt Goodwin. She's a historian. Now, I won't talk about Lincoln's um, flaws. He actually did not care about the black Americans. That was whitewashed by the historians for the American kids. His, his own wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, had an unstable personality. And he, she actually, she was so unstable, she actually chased Lincoln out of their house with a kitchen knife. That's to show how unstable she was. Now, Lincoln was elected twice by the president, uh, he was elected twice to be president of the United States by um, the electoral college system. He had even far less Americans voting for him than the recent uh, President Trump. Now, let's look at this Lincoln's famous speech during his re-election. They call it the second inaugural speech in 1865. See what, how wonderful he says. He says, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are we are in to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him, to care for him, actually the stupid American soldier who shall have borne the battle and his widow and his orphan to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. And if you look at this, he talks about forgiveness to the Confederacy. There's no word of revenge. So the last thing I need to tell you is that look at all these personalities, Michael Jordan, Beatles, Steve Jobs, Eminem, Walt Disney himself, Oprah Winfrey, Albert Einstein. So if you have never failed, you have never tried anything new. So all these personalities, they had gone through a lot of difficulties in their own passionate respective deals. See, even like Oprah Winfrey, she was demoted from a job as a news anchor. And she's the main, <clears throat> main person in television. And she wasn't, she was deemed not fit for television at that time. And now look at her, she's a billionaire. So you can Google this out to find out. So thank you. I must say this in the face of obstacles, remember, your self-dignity, number one. Remember your family and friends and do a lot of reading. Read yourself, go for nature, experience. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof. Razi, for that Thank really you, inspiring talk. It's great to see you again. I know I really speak for all of us when we say how much we miss your encouragement. We miss your excellence. Great job. Well done generally during our long case sessions. Instead, now we just get slammed, which I'm sure is all for our own good. Yay, MS Ortho class of 2021. In this time, after having thanked Prof. Razif, I also want to take the time to thank all the professors and lecturers who have given up lucrative private practice in order to stay here, to remain in UM as academic staff, in order to rise up a new generation of orthopedic surgeons for the country. If you, yes, you, would like to contribute to the advancement of science, research, learning, and medicine in Malaysia, do consider making a donation to Yayasan Orthopedic. The account details are as below, 5143-5671-4257. Give your donations, leave a legacy, make a mark. 
you too can help to bring up more orthopedic surgeons for our beloved country, Malaysia.